get a situation where you are finding that the vehicle is just not pulling. Uh, lack of power or probably no power. Quite often it's nothing more than just bad fuel. And if you've recently filled up with fuel, it's often a telltale that that's the cause of what's the problem. Of course, what do you do about that? You know, I need to sort out not only the problem, but actually the cause as well. So we know that we've probably picked up bad fuel. Often it's water that gets mixed with the fuel, or in some cases I've had them dilute the fuel, the diesel fuel, with paraffin. And of course the fuel of the car just doesn't like to run on either water or paraffin mixed with the fuel. The filters are cased here. This particular vehicle has got two filters, two elements that go in here. It's basically a dual fuel filter system, which does a lot of uh, good to actually keep the fuel nice and clean. Once the first one blocks up, you're going to need to change it, and possibly even the second one. So I start by looking to see, is this actually the cause? Right at the bottom of this fuel filter, this main one here, you've got a little butterfly you can undo, and that will allow a little bit of fuel to come out into, and I normally take a Coke bottle, cut a plastic Coke bottle, that gives me something I can catch the fuel in, put it under the fuel filter, open that butterfly, and just let that fuel drip in into it. It's a fuel filter and sedimenter, so it's designed to separate the water from the fuel, but when too much comes in, then has problems with the vehicle running. If I can undo that butterfly and just see what, what comes out there, I might see that actually the water's coming out or actually there's sediment in there. Right, to change the filters is not difficult. Um, we know we, we, we can take the filter off. Ideally you want a strap, which is similar to what you use to remove an oil filter. And it's a little tool that goes round to literally twist this filter off. Now this filter, I've got one here. That's what the filter looks like. It's got an O-ring on top. You've got the actual float, which screws in, and that's connected to a little wire underneath here. And you have to be sure that you disconnect that wire. So to remove this, you can either take off the two pipes and loosen the two bolts here, and then take the whole housing out. And then you need to hold the housing in something so you can undo it. Or you can use a tool where you put it onto the filter, and it goes around the filter, the strap, and you literally twist the filter off. If you can twist the filter off, you can unscrew it, leaving this little housing in place, get the filter off. You've then got to unscrew the plastic float bit in the bottom. And that normally with a pair of expandable water pump pliers on there. Twist that off, take it off, you'll find an O-ring. Take the new filter, make sure you've got the O-ring in place, use a new O-ring, put that on. I normally take a bit of diesel or something and just lubricate the O-ring or a bit of uh, spray oil. Put the new ring over, screw the sensor in here, and now you've got the filter ready with the cable. Take it back, put it underneath. Again, lubricate the O-ring here with a bit of 3-in-1 oil or uh, a bit of diesel even on your fingers, just so it doesn't run dry. And then tighten this filter, screwing it back up. To tighten it, I never use a tool. I always take a rag or something, and I'll take both hands around the filter, and I'll tighten it as tight as I can make it by hand, and that's enough. Um, once that's tight, you then have to prime it. This is the primer button here. What this does is sucks fuel. But before I suck the fuel in, I want to make sure that actually I've got clean fuel I'm sucking in. I've changed the filter and I will change this filter. This secondary filter is different. You will need to remove the two pipes off here. You'll have to take this housing out, which is probably the easiest. And at the bottom of this filter, it's got a bolt. One bolt, you loosen that bolt, and this outer housing comes off filter inside it is an element and that sits inside there and that's what you'll change on this one. So two different filters, two different types of filters that you'll be using. When I've changed both filters, the pipe, the hose, one hose here and the other hose, the second hose from here joins to this filter which is your primary filter and from there this one here is going back to the tank. So this is the one I actually want to use and I want to blow the fuel back into the tank and then I'll need to drain the, the bad fuel out of the tank. All the Toyota Land Cruisers have got a drain plug in the tank, right underneath the tank. You can loosen it off, drain the fuel. It's a pity you might waste a bit of fuel, but at least if you drain it into something clean, you can see how badly the fuel is contaminated. So I'll start by draining maybe four or five liters into a clean bucket, or a clean plastic bag in a bucket if I haven't got, just to make sure that I can see what's coming out of my tank. If there's any sediment or anything like water 
it's going to be at the bottom and the fuel will be on top. So you're likely to see that come out into the bucket first. If I can see the first five or six liters, I can tell me straight away whether or not the tank is badly dirty and in need of draining completely. And by draining the tank completely, I can be rest assured that the fuel I'm going to put back into the tank needs to be clean. In some cases, you, in emergency, you might have to filter the, the water by pouring off the clean diesel and getting rid of the water if that's the case. In some countries I've been in, the fuel is so badly refined that you just have to throw it away and start again with good fuel. So, always a problem. But at least you know then you've got good fuel in the tank, two new fuel filters. Once the fuel filters are back in, you've then got to prime the system. So ideally you want to suck, suck all the way from the tank through this primary filter into the secondary filter. This little plunger here, when you push this, it's like a little pump and that sucks the fuel in. I will normally take the hose that goes to the injector pump off, put my finger on there and as I'm pumping, I'll just release the air to escape out while I'm pumping. The fuel's coming from the tank through this primary filter into the secondary filter. It can also help if you're struggling to bleed the system to actually fill the filter up, to fill this filter up with diesel and that will help and then screw it on. It means that it's got less air to push out and diesel inside. You can't do it with this one very easy, but you can do it with this one. That said and done, it's always a good idea to look for fuel stations which are good circulation, high turnover of fuel, new pumps, and if you're in the middle of nowhere with an old pump, my advice is to go to the fuel through a funnel to keep the water separated.